In the name of the Blessed and Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, how long did it take this year? How long before your eyes glazed over and you asked yourself, when will this creed ever be over? Perhaps now more than ever we have so little patience for such philosophical expositions on what things are and what they are not, who is who and who they are not. Our distracted flesh wants soundbite, bumper sticker theology that doesn't make us think too much. Our heads start to hurt. What's the point of all the such as is, yet's, and therefores? Does it really matter? Does it matter that we know that the Father is not the Son, is not the Holy Spirit, and yet they are not three gods, but one God? Three distinct persons, Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity, all to be worshipped. We are blessed to make this great confession to be able with such clarity and precision to speak of God because that means we know who He is. But it isn't because of our intellectual genius. We didn't figure out the Holy Trinity. And for all the wonderful examples and analogies there are out there, they don't quite cut it, whether it's a shamrock or a triangle or triangles with circles, none of them fully produce the Trinity. No, to be able to make this confession, it is an act of God's grace and love that we should stare into this great mystery, even though we are completely unable to understand it. One in three and three in one. Three persons, one substance, one God. In His mercy, the one true almighty and everlasting God has made Himself known to us. He has not remained hidden. Though our sinful reason has clouded our minds from knowing Him, He has chosen not to remain hidden but to reveal Himself. But He hasn't revealed Himself just so that we could argue and theorize about Him, so that we can call councils and write creeds. Rather, the revelation of the Trinity is the revelation of our salvation. This feast day in the life cycle of the church shouldn't only be a day of teaching and joy, but a day of unsurpassed comfort. Rather than lament the few extra minutes, let us give thanks to God. Let us bow in repentant humility with the seraphim. Let us shake the very foundations of the thresholds with songs of praise, because our salvation is rooted in the very being of who God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Saving poor, undeserving, miserable sinners isn't foreign to God. Eating with prostitutes, drunks, hypocrites, and gluttons isn't something that God finds uncomfortable, something that He does only against His will. It isn't contrary to the holiness and glory that Isaiah beheld. It is essential to it. That is exactly what it means to say that God is love. In His very being, He is love. It is the very nature of God to give Himself for the benefit of another specifically for you. Unimaginable, yes. Unthinkable, maybe. 
incomprehensible, well, that goes without saying. That the unapproachable God whom the angels cannot even bear to look upon, they have to cover their eyes with their wings, whose great power and majesty should mean our immediate and eternal destruction is also the God who veiled that majesty in infant flesh and who later wrapped that pure spotless flesh in stripes and in blood so that you and I might be spared the eternal judgment that we deserve. That is certainly unsearchable and inscrutable, something to be believed, but never understood. Thanks be to God, to the blessed Trinity, it is knowable. But it is only knowable in the Son of Man. The true identity and character of God cannot be seen or known or believed apart from the only one who has descended from heaven, the God-man, Jesus of Nazareth, Son of Mary and Son of God. That is why to hold the little c Catholic faith, to keep it whole and undefiled, is not only to think thus about the Trinity, about the identity of the Godhead. It is also necessary for everlasting salvation to faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence He will come to judge the living and the dead. This Jesus, high and lifted up on a pole, the pole of the cross, like the bronze serpent, is how God loved the world. How God your Father loved loves you by sending His only begotten Son to bear your flesh, your sin, your idolatry, your lusting after gods of your belly who are not gods at all and who cannot save you, your heartache, your pain, your temptation, your disease, and your death. By His death, through the preaching of His deathly victory over death, the Holy Spirit proceeds from this Jesus according to the will of the Father into the waters of the font, where the waters of eternal life, the life of the Holy Trinity, God Himself, is given to you. There, you have been claimed as a child, there you were put to death, and there you were born again, not of flesh, but of water and of the Spirit. There you have been shown and brought into the kingdom of God. There you were caught up into the Godhead, not so that you should be God, but so that you might share in His life through your brother who has preceded you in death and opened the grave. With Him, we now sit at the right hand of the Father, there to reign and rule, triumphant over sin and death and the devil forever. Dear baptized children of God, this is indeed a day to rejoice. What greater cause of rejoicing can there be than the love of the Holy Trinity? A love that brings wretches like us into communion with the Almighty and Eternal Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And by the Holy Supper, that communion is strengthened and sustained. As with Nicodemus, we struggle to set aside thoughts and desires of the flesh. 
here your Lord comes to you, shining the light of His eternal day into the dark night of your life. Here, at this very table, He comes to drive from you the doubt and fear and unbelief that remain. He in you, and you in Him, forgiven and saved. He who dwells between the cherubim dwells with you and has taken away your guilt and atoned for your sin. Oh, the depths indeed. In the name of the most blessed and holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.